Hello and welcome to What's On In London. Your guide to the greatest city on earth. On today's show, we will take you on the London Eye to marvel at the stunning views and its engineering brilliance. Also coming up, I make my way towards the city along the Thames, passing some of London's most iconic structures. I spend my day around Islington, but not before I purchase some new outfits and visit a local art gallery. All the culture, history and lifestyle you could only dream about. Let's see what's on in London. Today we are beginning our journey on one of London's iconic landmarks, the London Eye. Since opening at the turn of the century, its status can be compared to that of Tower Bridge, Big Ben, Eros and the Tower of London. Used as countless backdrops in films and television, the London Eye was opened at the turn of the century to celebrate the new millennium. It's a breathtaking feat of engineering and design and from up here you'll be able to see up to 40 kilometres in all directions. It's a source of pride for the whole country as well as the capital. It is the most distinctive addition to our magnificent city, loved by Britons and tourists alike. Wow, that was fantastic. And where are you off to now, Ray? Well, Sophie, I'm making my way along the Thames to St Paul's. That sounds excellent. Well, I'm going to hop on the tube to one of my favourite parts of London, Islington, so I'll see you later on in the show. Absolutely. How about we meet here later on and take another trip on the London Eye? Sounds like a great idea. We'll see you then. See you then. Once you've taken in the sights of the London Eye, why not head to the depths of the London Aquarium, located nearby in County Hall. It's one of London's largest displays of aquatic life and home to almost 500 different species. The London Aquarium combines education, relaxation and entertainment through a multi-sensory voyage of discovery through the rivers, lakes and oceans of the world. Forget your fears as you come face to face with sharks, watch piranhas at feeding time and see rays up close in the ray pool. This tank is huge and holds over 2 million litres of water. A place that's sure to keep every member of the family entertained. A short walk from County Hall is South Bank, Britain's largest art centre. The Haywood Gallery is just one of the buildings that forms South Bank and is London's premier exhibition space for major international art shows. Recently, the gallery played host to a stunning Andy Warhol exhibition with many other exhibitions featuring in 2009. Originally called the Strand Bridge, Waterloo Bridge had its name changed to commemorate the recent British victory over the French. The bridge was opened in 1817 and people travelled from all corners of the globe to marvel at it. However, due to its lack of strength, the bridge was demolished in 1936 and was replaced by this supremely elegant bridge. Waterloo Bridge is the longest bridge in central London and its position at the bend of the Thames offers fine views. The Yongso Tower has a very interesting story behind it. Built in the 1920s when advertising restrictions were in place, the owners of the building, Liebig Extract of Meat Company, added a 67-metre tower with Oxo spelt out in windows on all four sides. Even today, it still proves to gain attention for the product. The Yongso Tower is home to apartments, shops and a very smart restaurant. The next bridge we come across is Blackfriars Bridge, first opened in 1769. Originally named William Pitt Bridge, the name never caught on and has always been referred to as Blackfriars Bridge. Reflecting the monastic origins of the area, the piers were designed to resemble pulpits. The area south of the Thames was home to many of London's power stations. It's these same power stations that have been redeveloped and turned into some of London's finest attractions. Perhaps the most famous development is the Tate Modern, opened in the year 2000. On display are important masterpieces from the likes of Matisse and Picasso, collections of surrealism and significant collections of pop art. Directly in front of the Tate Modern is London's newest bridge, the Millennium Footbridge. It had a much publicised opening in 2000, with those people walking across it experiencing that famous wobble. You'll be pleased to know that today the sway has disappeared after many walking tests and the installation of dampeners to reduce the movement. 
The bridge links the Tate Modern to St Paul's Cathedral, recognised instantly by any tourist. The history of St Paul's has been shrouded in controversy since it was built between 1675 and 1710 by Sir Christopher Wren. It stands on the site of four previous cathedrals, the first which dates back to 605 and is the only Renaissance cathedral in England. Remarkably, the cathedral appeared relatively unscathed from the devastation of World War II. Running around the inside of the inner dome, a hundred foot above the cathedral floor, is a walkway known as the Whispering Gallery. It is so named that if you whisper on one side, it can be quite clearly heard on the other, 112 feet away. Two towers were added in 1707, the Northwest Tower containing the second largest ring of bells in the world, and the Southwest Tower houses Great Paul, the biggest bell in Britain, which rings out every day at 1pm. St Paul's Cathedral also provided a great backdrop for the Olympic Parade in October 2008 to celebrate Britain's great achievement at the Beijing Olympics. It's just one of the many events that are planned over the coming few years in the lead-up to London's turn at hosting the Olympics. What's on in London is sure to keep you updated to what's on in the Olympics. Would you believe that London is home to 12,000 restaurants and bars? Here are a few that you should definitely check out. I'm about to experience Inamo, a pioneering oriental fusion restaurant and bar where they place the control of the dining experience right in your hands. There are no paper menus. Diners place orders from the illustrated food and drinks menu projected onto their table surface. I've just placed an order for a very eye-catching dish. Black cod marinated with spicy mizu. Wow, that looks fantastic! There is a bar downstairs inspired by the flavours of the Orient with some interesting takes on classic cocktails and the signature cocktail, the Inamo. This delicious cuisine, an exciting fusion of ideas and flavours from Japanese, Thai and Chinese cooking is served with charming and timely service in a warm and vibrant atmosphere. It's very original but, more importantly, tasty. Next time you are in Soho, don't miss Inamo in Wardour Street. Another great venue to attend while you're in Soho is the Amuse Bouge Champagne Bar in Poland Street. Amuse Bouge's main aim is to let you enjoy champagne as an affordable everyday luxury. Amuse Bouge is quite a, a simple concept. The main aim is to offer uh, an entry level or an unpretentious atmosphere or an environment for people who want to enjoy champagne. Select from a wide variety of champagnes ranging in price from the standard to the exclusive. Your selection of cocktail will be created by some of the very best in the business. What is distinct in our cocktail range is that every cocktail has a champagne element to it. There are two fantastic locations in Soho and Fulham. Whether it's for drinks after work or for a larger function, Amuse Bouge can accommodate any request. It's been a fascinating journey already, but there's still plenty more to see. Shortly, we visit Liverpool Street and Brick Lane before heading past Tower Bridge and towards the financial hub of Canary Wharf. But first, Sophie recently visited the Affordable Art Fair. 